another video to do. Hopefully I can cram this shit this way. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What the fuck's going on over here? What are you doing in my room? Mr. Frankie. Do, do I even know you? You look very familiar. You look like someone I know. Silence. I was in done talking imbecile. Oh. oh, shit, okay. I've traveled across so many realities, battling so many versions of yourself. And this is the next one I get? How annoying, honestly. Look, I just want to know is that how you even got in my room? Because I know that I was in an Aviator Man movie and that son of a bitch docks me right then and there, but how did you manage to even get in my goddamn house? How? Shut it, Francis. All right, look, you blockhead. Oh, I know you did not just call me that little man. Oh, hell no. I know you didn't just call me little, because little, I may be short man, but I ain't that goddamn little. Nah. Damn, man. Before we can even get 500 subs, this is how I fucking died in a Cobra Kai video. That's what you get for calling Far From Home a shit film. I did your audience and the world a favor. <laughs> Wait a minute. Ah, shit. This is a dream, isn't it? Crap. I'll find you. And I'll make sure you're dead. Till then, wake up. When I'm finished with that kid, he'll be begging me to be his teacher. And you know what he's gonna learn from me? Pain in every part of his body and fear in every part of his mind. <laughs> and here's the kicker. He's gonna thank me for it. Wake up and smell the coffee, Mr. LaRusso. Last time you weren't fighting this. This guy wants to break you, humiliate you, stomp you into the ground. Now what are you gonna do about it? And now, and do it. Now the real pain begins, Danny boy. Now, I am late to the party, and I'm late to even getting this video out, because I've had the thumbnail made by my good friend, Charles Zavala, who you should definitely check out, because even though I, I never really seen my friends, you should still check them out and support their art, okay? Check them out, please. They need your support, and they, they need my money, but I'm, I'm fucking stupid when it comes to money, but you know what I mean, okay? Now, let's get back into the video. Okay, pretty boy. Let's go. Rule number one. A man can't stand, he can't fight. With Cobra Kai dropping its most recent fourth season and bringing back one of the OG villains, Terry Silver, who is still played by the charming, beautiful man that is very sinister in this godforsaken series, that being Thomas Ian Griffith, him as Silver doesn't just manage to steal the show, but manages to be one of the best villains in Karate Kid history and puts Kreese down below. Kreese has got nothing on my boy Silver thanks to this fourth season. In today's video, we explore the character Terry Silver and witness his growth from being a cheesy villain Karate Kid 3 that never really had as much depth as he has now to possibly being one of the most terrifying sadistic villains in the Karate Kid saga, I'm your host, that guy Frank. That's right. Yours truly, and remember, ladies and gentlemen, pain does not exist in this dojo. And today, we strike first and we finally strike back. So let's get into this video. Terrence Terry. Silver is one of the many original villains involved with the Karate Kid trilogy. Silver was and is still played by the underrated actor that should definitely play the Green Goblin or Norman Osborn in the MCU if they ever want to go that route, if they ever just want to recast him, and don't get me wrong, I love me some Willem Dafoe, but after watching Thomas Ian Griffith as Terry Silver, this man, ooh, god damn, he is fine in that way too, but you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Thomas Ian Griffith, as Terry Silver, redeemed himself in this series. Silver's first appearance was in Karate Kid Part 3 and was presented to us as one of Kreese's many friends in the Vietnam War. Terry helps Kreese get back on his feet as, at this point in the franchise, he lost everything. Cobra Kai had vanished, all of his students had left him and Kreese went broke and wandered the streets for a while until good old pal Terry Silver took him right in. It's here where the franchise gives us a brief rundown into Terry's backstory. You see, Silver had no friends until he met both Kreese and Ponytail and joined their unit as this is also brought up in the 
fourth season, third and fourth season of Cobra Kai actually, they're captured by the Viet Cong. They almost didn't make it out alive had it not been for Kreese and, and Silver owed him his life and gave him his loyalty right then and there. Terry would make it his personal mission to get revenge on Daniel and Miyagi for humiliating his best friend Kreese by impersonating someone he wasn't to LaRusso. Daniel bought what Silver was giving him and this would lead to his downfall. Believing and trusting in Silver almost cost him his relationship with Miyagi as he was secretly being shown the way of the fist. This would lead Daniel LaRusso down the wrong path as he used his teachings to cause harm without realizing Silver ruined LaRusso's life and caused him to go into a downward spiral, but Miyagi saved LaRusso like always. But what Cobra Kai Season 4 did was take everything we knew about Terry already and made the character more different, more brutal, and more violent and sadistic than ever before. You want to be Cobra Kai, huh? <laughs> 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 Season 4 of Cobra Kai took this cheesy, goofy, 90s villain we all knew and turned him into a broken shell of a man with a heavy case of PTSD that hid his inner demons but in the end, they won as he completely drowned. Chris managed to find his former friend and wouldn't let sleeping dogs lie. Doing so, he awakened the dragon and Terry Silver stole the whole damn show. Silver was as charismatic, if not more, this time around in the Karate Kid franchise, but the writers did what they do best with the characters in this saga. Like Kreese was being shown to us in previous seasons, we got these flashbacks of both war buddies and how they got to where they're at now. Silver went from just being a kid who had no clue during Vietnam, nearly being left to die had it not been for Kreese, since, like he mentions in the series, Kreese was his strength. In Nam, keep in mind, weakness will play a pivotal role, not just in this video, but for the current season for those who still haven't watched it. Silver goes back and joins Cobra Kai with Kreis as a second sensei, but it's here where we slowly see shifts between the two of them. Silver has different ideas and aspirations, much more different compared to the vision by Kreese. They both want the way of the fist, but they butt heads as to how they will get there. We start to see Silver's slimy villain side, like in the third movie, but there's something about it this time around that's more serious than ever. This isn't the same guy who tormented a high school all-valley champ. This is a ticking time bomb with no remorse or care that Kreese would slowly create. Coming back into the franchise, many fans, including myself, believe that Silver was a changed man and would have saved Cobra Kai from the inside, but like many villains, he did the unthinkable and unpredictable coming back into the franchise, Silver not only managed to shed his weakness, but turned into a more vicious and cunning mastermind out of every villain involved in the Karate Kid saga. When it looked as if Silver was going to be the voice of reason, the voice of the voiceless much like CM Punk, we got a swerve nobody saw coming like The Rock being the corporate champion or Hogan joining the NWO. This was the guy that went from admitting that he tortured LaRusso in the 80s or 90s mainly because he was just doped up on coke and just full of himself to now being like a snake lying in the grass and waiting to strike. Once he returned to the dojo, Kreese and him were always meant to do everything together. They were meant to work everything out, rekindle their friendship and make the new generation of Cobra Kai the best that it would be, but cracks were starting to fall through. You see, Terry Silver never exactly followed Kreese's orders and instructions, causing a constant friction and rift between the two, and there's only so much one can take. 
the best piece of evidence that I can find of this stems from the student versus student showdown. Both senseis place a bet and a wager on students. Here, Silver mentions weakness, and now everyone has one. But you see, this pisses off Kreese as he boldly states that he has one. Nobody is left out. After the wager goes in favor of Silver, Kreese subtly threatens Silver to never do that again or say that Kreese has a weakness. The two slowly start to fall out, and it didn't help that Silver was trying to regain the friendship he once had with Kreese by doing something unspeakable. Extreme situations require extreme measures. Johnny is duped into going to Cobra Kai and gets attacked from behind by Terry Silver. Kreese doesn't want this. Even though he is a villain, he's not a monster and knows this isn't the right thing to do. It's as if he's gaining a conscience, he's gaining a soul. He's not the John Kreese that we once knew. The one that was just sadistic, that never gave a shit about anyone but himself. But why would he not want Silver to do this? We've always known Kreese as being a snake in the grass as well. Aside from Johnny being his former number one student that defected from him, you'd think he'd be okay with this, but he actually isn't. Let him go. Now. We agreed to settle this at the tournament. This is what you wanted. This would shed some light onto Kreese and his character, could his love for Johnny be his weakness? Silver was just as confused as we were in that shocking turn of events. What was just as shocking would also come right after. This is what I like to call the All Valley Screwjob, ladies and gentlemen. Now. This segment is a spoiler, so click off before I go into it. it. The series has been out for a couple of months already, so if you haven't, that's on you guys. I do apologize. It's on Netflix. You can watch a bootleg if you want to. You know, you can always do that, even though it sucks for some creators. But hey, go watch it. You already watching my video? Go watch it before I break some boards onto your face, okay? I'm, I'm gonna drop the key if you don't go. All right, you still here? All right, we're getting into this. After the Cobra Kai's win the All Valley, Defeating both Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang Karate, those dojos would cease to exist thanks to their wager early on in the season. The show had even more swerves to pull on us, more than Vince McMahon riding Raw at its last minute as always. <laughs> Silver being an unthinkable and unpredictable villain somehow managed to bribe the referee and change the finish of a match. Similar to the Montreal screwjob Vince did to Bret Hart, Silver screwed LaRusso. He wanted to win at any cost and score Cobra Kai a spot at the best karate dojo in the valley and his wish came true. At a cost though. When I mentioned Silver shedding his weakness, I didn't go too into detail. Silver throughout season four was trying to find his place. After awakening his inner cobra, or his inner dragon, as I would say, Silver would go through many changes and phases and forms and turn into possibly the best version of the character ever. And I don't say that as he became a good guy. Far from it. Silver became an evil mastermind with no heart or remorse. This Terry Silver wanted to get things done and he didn't care about the cost. Everyone has a price, much like the million dollar man would say. But in this case, everyone's got a weakness. We found that out with John Kreese's love for Johnny and Robbie as they were his favorite students. But Silver's weakness was actually John Kreese. Harry would not only set up and frame his best friend, his brother John Kreese, for something he didn't do, attempted murder. This is the redemption of Terry Silver. This was the Terry Silver we all knew, but more dangerous and unthinkable than ever before. Gone was the Disney drama. This was a fight. No. This was a war on the All Valley nobody expected. Because now, LaRusso, now, 
Miyagi Do Eagle Fan Karate. This is where the real pain begins. Cobra Kai's fourth season dished out some of the best action choreography through the series and definitely over delivered in many areas. There were some negatives, but that's another video for a different day if I ever do think about doing it. But again, the best part of this series, at least for me, was seeing Terry Silver grow into the best possible villain, redeeming himself from the goofy Karate Kid Part 3 schlock to a wild card that would do anything to get what he wanted. While it may not have been the best season, it definitely had to be the most entertaining out of all so far, and I can't wait to see what other dastardly deeds Terry Silver has in store. This was your friendly neighborhood host, that guy Frankie. That's right. Yours truly, and I can't break boards for shit, so I'm not even gonna fucking attempt, guys. I'm sorry, but you gotta remember to strike first, subscribe, and no mercy. Oh, yeah. but it's probably cringe, but <laughs> you know how it is. Like, share, comment, subscribe if you like the video, and yeah, stay safe, guys. Take care, and see you in the next one.